Hello and welcome to this Radiology Nation ultrasound video tutorial on the appendix. Identifying the appendix on a CT scan can be a real difficulty. See if you can identify the appendix on this scan. You should be looking for a blind ending tubular structure arising from the cecum. Now that we've seen what an appendix looks like on CT, let's have a look with ultrasound. Although the appendix is located in the right iliac fossa, we start with a probe in the right flank. This is because we need to define the local anatomy before we head for the appendix. Our first task is to identify the ascending colon. If we can find this structure, then we can scan inferiorly to locate the cecum, from which we know the appendix will arise. As the bowel is likely to contain gas, the ascending colon will appear as a densely echogenic structure. But how do we tell the large bowel from the small bowel? Well, the colon will have haustra which gives it a lobulated contour, while the small bowel has valvular conniventes, which do not cause undulations in the bowel wall. By turning the probe into the long axis of the colon, we are better able to see the haustra, and therefore confirm that we are looking at the large bowel. Now we scan caudally. We pass from the ascending colon into the cecum, and then continue inferiorly until we have come off the inferior end of the cecum. At this point, we scan back up again. We are now looking for the terminal ilium. Finding the terminal ilium is important because pathology here can mimic appendiceal pathology. We first identify the terminal ilium in its long axis, and then we turn the probe 90 degrees to image it in its axial plane. We will now change to a higher frequency probe. This will give us better definition of the abdominal structures. You can further optimize your image by applying downward pressure with the probe while scanning. This compresses the intervening soft tissue and improves your image quality. Just as before, we start in the right flank, scanning down onto the cecum and then back up to identify the terminal ileum. Here we see the terminal ileum lying just deep to the rectus abdominis muscle. Unlike the ascending colon we imaged before, the small bowel does not have haustra and therefore has a smooth wall contour. We image the terminal ileum in its axial plane, looking for signs of inflammation. The terminal ileum shown here has a normal wall thickness and there is no surrounding edema or collection. We will now look closely for the ileocecal valve taking time to optimize our image further using the gain control. This is an important landmark. The ileocecal valve defines the position of the cecum. So once we have found it, we know that the appendix must arise nearby. Look carefully for a small blind ending tubular structure. The position of the appendix varies from person to person, and therefore you need to look all around the cecum to be sure of finding it. Having found the appendix, we must now image it in its entirety. As the appendix is small, using two hands for fine movement control is a useful strategy. At the tip of this appendix, we can see acoustic shadowing, as there is some gas trapped within it. A useful anatomical landmark is the psoas muscle. The appendix will often be seen overlying this structure. Let's have another look at the appendix, this time without the arrow to point it out. See if you can identify it for yourself. If you are having difficulty, feel free to rewind the video and have another look. Trying to identify a normal appendix like this one is very difficult with ultrasound. As you will soon see, identifying an inflamed appendix is much easier. 
Having gone through a strategy for scanning the appendix, we should now talk about the ultrasound appearances of appendicitis. It is useful to review the CT appearances of appendicitis, as there are some important similarities. In this example of appendicitis, we can see a thick walled, dilated appendix that is surrounding fat stranding. We can actually see the same things with ultrasound. So let's have a look. In this example, we have the thick walled, dilated appendix, just as we saw on CT. We can also see evidence of the fat stranding seen on CT, as the mesenteric fat appears diffusely echogenic. But there are even more things to note with ultrasound. As ultrasound is a dynamic test, you can also look for compressibility and for peristalsis. The absence of both of these features further suggests appendicitis. Color Doppler assessment allows you to look for hyperemia, which is another useful supportive feature. In this example, we can see that the submucosa, although echogenic, is intact. Here's another example of appendicitis on ultrasound. Again, we have a dilated, thick-walled appendix. This time, there is a discernible fat wrap of inflammatory tissue. As we continue scanning, we see a defect in the wall of the appendix. There is also some surrounding periappendiceal fluid. These findings are suggestive of a perforated appendix. During the course of this video, I hope to have showed you a strategy for imaging the appendix with ultrasound. This is a difficult skill to acquire. But with practice, you can diagnose appendicitis effectively and without the radiation dose of CT. Thank you for watching this Radiology Nation video. If you've liked it, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can also follow us on our various social media accounts.